Good morning everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Leaf Classes. I am Anjali. Today we are going to start a new topic constructors. From this topic in section A you get around 2 marks question and this is also used in section B where you have to do class as user defined program their constructors are also used. So this is very important topic. Uh, now children you know that Java is object oriented programming language and in Java the main primary focus is object and without constructors objects cannot be created. So constructors play an important and essential role in Java programming. Now all of you know how to create the object of a class. And in creation of object of a class constructor is used. And the name of the constructor is same as the class name. We cannot change the name of the constructor. So if we go by the definition. So we can say constructor is a function that has the same name as that of a class. And it does not have any return value not even void. So when we take any user defined function we always give a return type. If the function is not returning any value we write void. But constructor is a function which does not return any value not even void. So when we write the constructor definition where we have to write the data type return data type there nothing is written. So suppose I take an example say class name is A. And here we write the constructor. Say this is the body of the constructor. So it has the same name as your class name. So this is constructor. Now what is the use of constructor? Children now you know that the data members or the instance variables are the properties of the object. So when you want to initialize these data members then constructors are used. If we don't initialize the data members or instance variable we may get the garbage value. So initialization of these data members are must. So the use of constructor is to initialize the data members. data members and these data members are also known as instance variable. So the primary work of constructor is to initialize the instance variables and these instance variables are the properties of the object. Let us take one example. Say suppose I am taking class sum and here I have taken two instance variable a and b and I want to initialize these two variables with the values depending upon the question say a equals to 5 and b equals to 10. So this function has the same name as class and here we are not writing anything not even void. So this is a constructor. This is a constructor and these are instance variables. Instance variables and this is your class. So the function with the same name as class which is used to initialize the data members. The instance variable which are given here, you can initialize these data members. Now let us see how this constructor works. As I told you, constructor is used to initialize the data members. When we create the object of a class, the constructor is automatically executed and initializes the data members of the object. Let us take this example and see the working of constructor. If I have taken a class sum, the class name is sum. Here I have taken two data members A and B, both of int type. Then sum function is there which has the same name as the class name and no return type. That indicates that this is a constructor. Now here in this constructor, 
I have initialized A equals to 10 and B equals to 20. These data members are initialized over here and one function we have used without return type that is void is used here. So display is here. I am printing A, B and A plus B. To create the object of this class, let us take main function void main and I will give the statement for creation of the object. All of you know now, sum that is the class name space object name, let me take ob equals to new. New is the operator which is used to create the object and class name. Now when we are writing this statement, the sum constructor is automatically executed. So the control will be shifted here. It will execute this part. It will initialize the data members A equals to 10 and B equals to 20. Now here I am writing the statement void display. That is the calling of this function. So, when we have given this statement sum ob equals to new sum, this sum constructor is automatically called and the body of constructor is executed. So, the control will come here, it will execute and it will assign a equals to 10, b equals to 20. Closing braces will take you back here. Now, ob dot display will take you again here. Here it will execute system.out.println a that is 10 print ln b 20 and third print statement a plus b here it is 30. Now if you notice that when we are using this statement the constructor is automatically called we are not calling the constructor separately. So it is called and it is initializing all these data members and this closing braces is taking you back to its caller that is main here and then when we are executing the next function and printing the values of the data members you see what is initialized here those values are displayed over here. So this is how the constructor works. We don't have to call the constructor separately. It is automatically called at the time of creation of the object. Now let us have a look on the features of a constructor. Constructor has the same name as the class name. It has no return type, not even void. Constructor is called automatically at the time of creation of the object. It is used to initialize the data members and constructor is always public. So what we did till now, it is just the summary of that. If you want, you can take the screenshot of this. Constructors can be categorized into two types, non-parameterized constructor and parameterized constructor. Children already in user-defined functions, we have seen parameterized and non-parameterized functions. Same is here. For non-parameterized constructor, let us take one example. If the class name is sum and here we have data members and you are writing the constructor name sum without any parameters, then this is your non-parameterized constructor which has the same name as the class name and here no parameters are given. Now if we take parameterized constructor, the class name is say sum and here we write the instance variable and suppose here I write int x comma int y some parameters any parameters you specify here then this is known as parameterized constructor which has the parameters so children please note that constructor can have parameters but it cannot have return type so that is the difference between function and constructor constructor will never ever have any return type but functions will always have a return type if the function is not returning any value we always write before the function
function name white to indicate that this will not return any value. So parameterized is this where the constructor is having some parameters. It is taking some arguments and non-parameterized where no arguments are being passed to the constructor. As per your syllabus, you have default and parameterized constructor. So we come to default constructor. This is non-parameterized constructor which is used to initialize the data members with the default values as per their data type. So if I take the example class sum and here I write two data members int a comma b and I don't give any constructor myself over here and I write the function void display to display these two values you say system dot out dot print ln a and we print the value of b now when we create the object in main function void main how you create the object class name space object name equals to new class name and when you call this display function here what should be the output you close the class here a b i have not used any separate constructor now this is how you use constructor here sum ob equals to new sum here no sum constructor there is no function with the name sum but we know that at the time of object creation the constructor is called now when constructor is not there what will happen sum here it will work as a default constructor so it will initialize the default values according to the data types of the data members say int the default value of int is 0 so here it will initialize a as 0 and b as 0 so when after creation of the object when this function will be called it will display the value 0 and 0 in a and b because the default values of int type are 0 once the constructor is given here the constructor definition is given then this default constructor does not work default constructor works in the absence of the constructor definition so default constructor is non-parameterized it is inbuilt it is predefined constructor and it works only in the case when we don't give the definition of the constructor and it initializes the data members as per the data type if it is int the default value of int is initialized if it is float then according to float so whichever data type you are writing for the data members it will be initialized according to that so in your syllabus you have default and parameterized. I hope both these are clear. I hope the definition, the need of the constructor, its features and the types are clear to each one of you. The description box contains the PDF link which contains the details about the constructor. Next video of this topic we will be doing constructor overloading and programs of constructors. I hope you are enjoying learning with me computer application subject. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. Keep practicing, keep doing the programs, keep working hard. God bless you children.